Hi, how are you? I'm Walter Waso, a lecturer at North Coast Medical Training College. I'm going to take you through action research and I'll specifically I'll be keen on community-based participation action research. As community health practitioners, I think you'll be so much involved with the community and that is going to really be your work where you will engage them in terms of health awareness health interventions and so many strategies that you will help the community as far as health is concerned. So when you're talking about community-based uh, um, when you're talking about community-based participatory action research is that um, is a collaborative approach to research that involves all stakeholders throughout the research process from establishing the research question to developing data collection tools to analysis and dissemination of information. So basically you're involving the community in bringing, uh, in coming up with new solutions, in coming up with innovative approaches to solving the community health needs and that is part of your role as a community health personnel. So community-based, basically what we mean by community-based, it means that it's grounded in the needs, issues, concerns, and strategies of communities and community-based organizations that serve them. So when you're talking about participatory, that means that you're actually engaging them, communities and community knowledge in the research process and its outcome. That means that you start with what the community know and add value to what the community know and yeah, that is how uh, a solution will be able to be ended to the longest term. So action-based and, uh, and oriented uh, supporting, that means that it entails supporting and or enhancing the strategic action that leads to community transformation and social change. So that means that the action means that um, whatever solutions you will have come with, that means they are the ones that are going to be implemented at community level and are going to be owned by the community. So by its nature, CBPR, PAR is uh, applied research. So this is a type of uh, applied research and it seeks to change the issues that are critical to community and focuses on encouraging the community directed at addressing their social concern. So basically that means that um, what, what really concerns the community is what you are going to work on. And that means that uh, solutions uh, will come or will arise from the problems that uh, the, society, the community is facing for that matter. So why community-based uh, participatory action research should have equal inclusions and collaboration in identification, research, and solution of community issues. So that is why you have to do that. So community should have equal inclusion. So we should include the community in coming up with the solution. You should collaborate with them when coming up with solution and identifying such solutions through research and of course and resolution of the community issues. So there is value and legitimacy in the knowledge of individual, families and others in the community. So that's why we are talking about community-based participatory action research. So when you're looking at uh, uh, community-based participatory action research specific goals, so in terms of action, you choose a problem. That is the action part. Identify resources and solution, develop a plan, implement the plan, evaluate and perhaps return to step one. So it is always in cyclic. And we're talking about research now, then it entails identifying a research question, uh, choosing a research methodology, implementing the methodology, analyzing the research and reporting on the results. So in my next uh, discussion with you, I'll be focusing more on how really can you be able to do your action research in a very systematic way and the systematic way comes with the research and the action way comes with the action part so when you're looking at the two circles uh that means that uh, community-based participatory action research actually involves the two ways action and research and all this has different approaches that you're going to employ so when you're talking about community-based participatory action research, it promotes community research that focuses on geographic place of our neighborhood, 
So it recognizes that CBOs often refer to community as a place or a physical geographic space or location, such as neighborhood in which issues and interventions are concentrated and change is intended to occur. So this actually comes with implementing and appreciating that uh, how things are done if they are not having they are not the best way then we have to look at the other ways of having how to solve such health issues within the community or any other problems that occurs within the community so this framework serves as a foundation to community research that is community based that means that you're engaging the community and place space that focuses on a geographic area so if we now uh, for example, the project I'll give you is that you'll be focusing strategically at family as a community and all our discussion will be based on our families because now it will be impossible for us to go to the community because of the risk that uh, I'll be putting you at. So when you're talking about engaging the community, uh, community-based participatory action research recognizes that uh, residents have an ultimate knowledge on issues uh, so we, when you're talking about again maybe just to repeat is that uh, engaging when it comes to engaging the community uh, community based participatory action research thrives with community engagement the research process especially through primary data collection methods such as interviews focus group and community engagement mapping engage mapping so this community engagement ensures that those who represent that place particularly those who resided there ground this research with their unique perspectives and experiences so that means that uh, when you're going to the community and collecting data and we say when you're doing uh, we'll talk about this that there are so various method of uh, collecting data from the people you can decide to do interviews focus group where you discuss with people and set a group of questions that you'll ask people within a set uh, a team and community engaged mapping I think uh, community engagement marketing is also another approach you can use uh, to collect your data and that actually ensures that you're engaging the community in uh, getting their perspectives or experiences so that now when you are doing a research you can be able to conclude competently so what place does your project issue f or, or issue focuses on so that is a question that uh, we need to answer for ourselves so that uh, when I'll be assigning you a project and an area of focus later on, then you'll have to ask yourself, how am I going to engage the people that have been tasked to? And how am I, am I going to actually ensure that um, uh, I'm able to get the ideas and views in a very nice, comprehensive, systematic way? So participation continuum. So when you're talking about participation, of course, it falls along a continuum from community members having minimal input and focus primarily on gaining community responses to community members engaging and developing research tools, processes and processes to community members engaging in all aspects of the research from the design phase through the data collection, that, um, data collection, data analysis and dissemination and action. But for our case now, we'll be focusing more on uh, or engaging them at uh, looking at identifying their problems. Because when you're looking at the research process, I think uh, we'll be focusing more to ident uh, in identifying what really are their problems, what really are the possible solutions that they think they have to certain such problems. And then when it comes to designing, that will be a work. And uh, when it comes to data collection, of course, it will be your work. And when it comes to data anal analysis, you as a community health personnel, it will be your work. And dissemination, it will be your work. But action, actually, when it comes to action now, uh, you can involve them uh, at this level. I want you to involve them when it comes to the solutions uh, that you'll have arrived at. So the distinction can also be, uh, be, th uh, be through uh, be thought of as a continuum defining researcher in relation to the community being researched. So that means that um, you actually being with together with with, with the with the with, with the community, actually now you're becoming a facilitator to their solutions, to the solutions of their problem. But you are not giving them a direct solution to their problem. You are asking them which is the best way to do this and this and this. And based on the knowledge that you have, then you can be able to uh, 
add value to whatever solutions they already have. And in that way, uh, the ownership of the solution to the problem will be with the community and chances of them continuing to implement that solution to their problem will be there and that problem will be eliminated. So at the end of the participation continuum, community members will be in the control of all the aspect of the research and of course will be in control to the solutions to their problems as well. So let's look at uh, how really do we engage the community and and when do you need to engage the community more and when do you need to engage the community less. So in that scale, research, design, study questions, community to answer, question, to answer questions, you engage them less. But you engage them more on community-led and controlled research, especially when talking about where community defines the issue. At that level, community defines the issue and research questions, create data, collection tools, recruit partic uh, participants and collect data, analyze data, disseminate findings, generate action uh, plans, and carry out action plans. So full collaborator at all stages. So at that level, when you are engaging more in the community, and at this level it will be a challenge, especially when you're talking about the literacy level of our community. So it will be very hard for you to engage the community at every aspect. But it will be more, will be more emphasizing uh, to you to engage them in um, uh, defining the issues and research questions. And that at, when it comes to creating data and collecting tools, uh, recruiting partic participants and collecting data, analyzing data and disseminating the finding, uh, actually that will be your work. And when it comes to generating action plans and carrying out action plans, that will be the work of the community so that actually ownership can happen. So when, it, when, when, when you're looking at the second stage, um, mm -hmm. at the moderate part where you don't really engage, the, you can engage the community at 50-50 basis where the committee helps identify the issues and research questions and provide some responses. Researchers conduct uh, research analysis and dissemination and design the intervention. I think that this is where we will be and we'll be focusing more at that. When looking at the next part, the committee helps in identify the research questions, provide responses and help generate the solutions on based on the findings. And researcher collect and analyze the data, disseminate the findings, develop interventions based on the suggestion. I think you, you can ask yourself where will you want to work with the community? Will you want to work at a, at the first level? second uh, level, third level, or the fourth level? Would you want to engage the community 100% or at a certain level where you as a person who is learned, uh, it will be best to you that you do the hard part, especially when it comes to analyzing the data, um, um, maybe uh, disseminating the finding to the community. But when it comes to developing intervention, uh, based on the suggestion, also that will be a part. So it is up to you now to decide where will you want to best work and where do you think uh, community-based uh, participatory action research best suits you. Because actually when you're discussing this, then you have to consider factors such as the literacy level, the level of education of the people who are participating with you if that level is actually very very uh, learned that means that actually you can involve them 100 percent from the first go the last part of your research so what are the benefits of community-based participatory action research it facilitates collaborative equitable partner partnership in all phases of research and then it creates a balance of research action for the benefit of all. It cognizes community as a unit of analysis, build on community strength and resources, assets, and promotes joint learning skills sharing, capacity building among all partners, engaged in long, engage in long-term process and commitment, emphasizes and engage in addressing the often complex cause of local problem, disseminate findings and knowledge gained to all partners and involve partners in the process of taking action or next steps. Involve system development through a 
cyclical and interactive process. So actually that's, those are the benefits of community-based participatory action research. So what are the research ethics in community-based participatory action research? Research ethics, for example, when you're defining what actu uh, research ethics these are the principles and rules that guide how people should be treated when they are participant in a research process or project. And this is where we need to give a respect to these people and we need to understand that they are humans, they have feelings and they have responsibilities. So let's look at some of the ethics. One of the ethics is, uh, is, uh, you need to follow is accessibility to findings. You can't involve the people without giving them the feedback, what you've done. The benefit to the participants, whatever you are doing should be beneficial to the participant, not to you as a researcher. And then community voice. So the community voice should always be there. Like, who is the community? Who represents the community? Who speaks for the community? And that is very important. Credit, how are results represented? Whose voice are heard and represented? Who receives credit for the work conducted? So you need to, you as a researcher, don't you, uh, because you are involving the community, you should not take all the credit, but you should also, uh, the, the community should also take credit of what they have actually participated in. Data ownership. Once the data has been collected, who owns it? Where is it stored? How will you responsibly make the data available to different community and other stakeholders? So that means that data should be actually be available. You should avail the data to the community, of course. You have involved them. You should share the data with the community. You should not just go and shelf this in the library or in the store or whichever place you're going to put that it will not help the community at the end of the day. Division of labor. How does equity translate into division of labor in the project process? Is the work divided equally, equitably among the partners? So that means that um, you should be able to have a way of how to balance uh, uh, in terms of uh, involving the community in that way. So justice. Do all members of the community have equal opportunity to participate in the research? So that is very important. Privacy, will it do any harm to the community or individual individuals to report the findings? So actually there are things that you should not actually make them public as much as you allow to disseminate the information back to the people because there are issues that are very confidential. So do you get adequate permission for participants that uh, or those that represent them? For example, parents, guardians of, of, of minors. Do they understand and agree with the way you plan to use the data or information? This is very important, especially you are talking about children who cannot decide for themselves. And when talking about harm, uh, are you talking about when you are doing your research, uh, is, is the information that you are going to share with the, the participants or in the public uh, arena, is it going to cause harm to the community? So representation of local community, does the representation of the finding in any way reinforce negative social stereotypes in representing the communities? For example, let's look at uh, a research that will be very keen in looking at um, the life cells of the, of the OGEC. If you're doing a research and then it looks like it is going to undermine their welfare or the perception of other people to the OGEC, then that research is not having any respect to them. Rigor of research and fidelity to findings. Are findings being presented accurately? Are they presented with any bias or in a way to make people hear what they want to hear? So that means that when you're doing your research actually, you should be able to, to think about that. Are you doing it accurately? Are you using the, uh, the mathematics in uh, uh, and the conclusions that you are use, arriving at, is it really going to be very fair? So you should not skew your finding to your assumptions. So your, your finding should be very fair. The mathematical uh, model you are going to use, let's say the mean mod and uh, whichever graphs you are going to use, they should be 
really very fair and you should not cook your data. If your contact research that involves the community members and this research will be published, you may want to consider an ethical review board. And this is when you're talking about ERC, ERB, and this is, uh, you can't just do your research without the research proposal passing through uh, the ethical review board. So, sample task. I want to give you a sample task. Corona is the current health problem. With the help of family members, do, do a problem analysis. Break the problems into simpler tasks. And then with family members, identify possible solutions to the sub-problems. And then identify workable solutions and ambiguous solutions. So this is a task that you need to do by the end of this presentation and then let's see how you'll be able to find it so this is work you should be able to do it in two days time after this video that i have made for you i want to stop there and wish that uh, you have gotten uh, something new and you have been empowered to understand how you can do action uh, community-based uh, participatory action research and this one, as a community health worker, it is very important that you are able to understand how this is done competently. If you have any problem, I think you'll be able to get me through MLM and, uh, and of course, at your WhatsApp group, Action Research. And that will be very important. Uh, you'll be able also to get, if you want any more clarification, you have my number. And you can email me through... Uh, the email that I'll provide to you on the your WhatsApp group. Thank you so much. Let's end our discussion there and have a nice time.